one thing that I want to say before we dive into this next lesson is recognize that what we're throwing at you here is a lot of new content and a lot of new information for many of you. Um, and so it's going to take a while for all of this to sort of become comfortable and familiar. And you're going to see a lot of examples and be given a lot of support in terms of how do we set this up for, be for beginning language learners, but also for our more advanced language learners in ways that the project can be successful. So if you don't see all of that in these first few lessons, don't be frustrated. It's coming. We just have to give it to you in bite-sized chunks. So for this particular lesson, we're going to be thinking about where we can find meaningful project ideas, how we develop a project idea in meaningful, motivating, and moving or, you know, in, uh, personally empowering ways for, for learners, and then what process we might use to craft a powerful driving question. So where can you find ideas? Well, Basically, they are everywhere. And it really is more of a question of learning to notice both problems and possibilities that extend around you. Um, and that often means that you're going to reflect on previous experiences, previous projects you may have tried, even if they were dessert projects, and think about, are there things that I could tweak so that this becomes a more meaningful, authentic project, for example? So we're gonna look at some examples. Um, this one happens to be uh, an example of a problem that a French teacher was experiencing in her middle school classes. And that was that enrollment was dropping. And so she decided to turn that into a project um, for her language students. And their driving question was, how can we increase enrollment? Or more specifically, how can initial enrollment in French classes at her school be increased to save the program itself and to save future higher level classes at the high school? And I've put the link to um, all of these projects, just by the way, into the modules so that as you go back and look at the written materials that accompany these um, slides, you'll be able to actually go look at the projects. Notice that she's used a website to organize students' progress through the project. So they can see sort of the overall piece here. And then as they click on the various individual um, elements, they can see the different um, things that they need to do. Her driving questions then are things like, why are more students taking Spanish? How can we convince people to take French? What are the benefits of taking French? So these questions were designed to generate more sustained inquiry. Here's another example from our PBLL project repository where um, the purpose was that visitors to campus who spoke Japanese didn't really have any material to kind of guide their visit. Um, this was at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And so this particular teacher partnered with the Campus Center and the International Service Offices um, and had her students produce a campus map and guide as their public product. And their public audience was Japanese visitors. If you'd like to see more details on each of the, these projects, you can visit the project repository as you're exploring um, other things later. Another example from the project-based language learning repository was how can we engage Russian tourists in visits to Singapore? So if you are teaching Russia, Russian in Singapore, um, you need a way to give students a public audience and a public purpose, right? And so helping them, helping learners to really get excited about what are the things that we really love seeing and doing in this place where we live and how can we share that with people around us. And so they produced a map that was designed for tourists um, in Russian that highlighted um, critical things to see and do and they shared that with their um, community partner which was a local hotel. Another source for project ideas is to think about what concerns, interests, or intrigues you and your students. 
so you can think about global issues. For example, how does a textbook topic that you're supposed to be teaching relate to a larger issue in the world? Some good sources for ideas are the global theme, themes from the AP Language and Culture Guidelines. And within those language and culture guidelines, you can see that they have some sort of subcontexts that might give you some ideas for types of projects or, or topics that you might want to tackle. And you'll notice that many of these are connected to um, different career pathways and that they provide lots of different cultural opportunities or contexts for students to learn about the target culture regarding each of these areas. You can think about what your learners want to change about the world, what they have to contribute to the world, um, and looking for opportunities for them to take their greatest joy and connect it to the world's deepest needs, um, as this uh, quote kind of highlights. What's interesting here is that a lot of learners are doing this on their own. Even learners as young as 16 or 17 years old are out developing products and doing things to address needs that they um, are concerned about in the world. So as we flip through these next um, few, start thinking about if you can identify the textbook topic, the global issue, the cultural context, potential career pathways, and connections to learners in each of these project ideas. So this one, the driving question was, how can we help the world gain a more nuanced perspective on Arab cultures? Um, and so this one um, might partner with uh, local people from different aspects of um, Arabic speaking society. And students were producing sort of a multimedia, so, uh, like public service kind of announcements. Um, targeted at the local community to help people start thinking in more nuanced ways. This one is called the Little Explorers Project, and the idea behind this program or this project was to get um, elementary school children to become more globally engaged citizens of the world. Um, so they partnered with a school in Ecuador and the public product was a children's book series that the college students created to introduce children to various parts of the world. Um, and their public audience was elementary school students in Ecuador who came from rural communities and might not have had necessarily a lot of opportunity to um, experience other parts of the world. And it gave the college students an opportunity to learn more about Ecuador and life in um, areas of the world that they didn't have personal experience with. Girl Power was a project designed to help students think about the importance of education for females around the world, both in their own local community and also in a uh, Peace Corps, like not sister city, but, but a Peace Corps match village in rural Africa. Um, and they produced a community forum designed to raise community awareness about this issue um, that included multimedia presentations and exhibits, and they shared that with the French-speaking communities in California. Easy Japanese was a project that was designed to convince other people of the importance of this particular type of Japanese as a tool for emergency communication both for people with low levels of literacy and also for tourists in Japan during um, major disasters like uh, the big earthquake that they had there a, a number of years ago. So they partnered with volunteers in Japan who work with immigrants and produced this newsletter, which you can see on the right, um, and a website designed to target um, developers of e Easy Japanese instructors of Easy Japanese and junior high school students who were required in Japan to learn Easy Japanese as a part of their schooling, um, as well as other volunteers who study or learn Japanese in uh, Easy Japanese in Japan. 
Um, another way to get project ideas is to think about how you might connect them to cultural contexts. So really emphasizing the cultural standard. Um, this particular project asked college students to start thinking about the problem of illiteracy and drawing on some of, some of the recent governmental reports um, around the world they decided to work with or partner with students and professors from two different Brazilian universities to collaboratively investigate what makes good children's books, to collaboratively investigate the kinds of topics that children might be interested in um, in Brazil and what typical books are like there, and then to develop a literacy campaign along with um, meaningful children's books that they co designed, published, and wrote. Um, and their public audience were, were young readers in poor communities in the state of North uh, Bahia in northeastern Brazil, who did not necessarily have access to a lot of literacy materials um, or, or opportunities to really do a lot with reading or with books. Um, and what was interesting about this project is that the students and young readers themselves became informants that actually contributed to the learning of the college students and that the college students contributed to the learning of these elementary students in collaboration with uh, Brazilian university students. So there was a true equal exchange among the groups. Uh, this particular project was, the purpose was to raise awareness of the health effects of fast food consumption, and particularly the idea that a lot of American fast food has been sort of infiltrating the culture in Italy and what effects that was having um, on Italian youth, and then the effects that it has, uh, of course, here in the United States on people who consume high degrees of fast food. And so this project was highly um, focused on cultural comparisons and a lot of the ongoing investigation that took place um, really highlighted that. And if you look at previous, some of our previous webinars and things, um, you'll see an example of that project presented. This one is a project from a young boy actually, who just was really concerned about sea turtles and the fact that people were destroying the environment um, and not treating the turtles well. And so he put together his own campaign, this was a little elementary student, um, that was an activity book which has eventually been translated to five different languages and has become part of um, an ongoing eco-literacy project uh, as part of a community organization and has been distributed around the world. Um, and this is something that an individual student did on his own, but it will give you ideas for, could you put together an activity book for, you know, to address some particular social issue and what kinds of community partners might you work with in order to um, distribute that book booklet to raise awareness and promote engagement with that particular issue. We can connect to career pathways as a tool for finding meaningful ideas for projects, and I've posted a number of resources for helping you to do that. But here are a couple of examples. Um, this one was a project that arose out of the fact that a colleague of mine was a doctor and she decided to participate in a Doctors Without Borders type of volunteer mission to um, the Dominican Republic and to some other countries in that area, uh, Honduras, for example. And what she found when she went there is um, a situation where 60,000 people were being served in terms of medical care with a single. Um, clinic, and the clinic was only staffed by volunteers during the rainy season, uh, when it wasn't the rainy season, sorry, because that was the only time they could get to the clinic, and that there were people that when she got there were having to have limbs amputated because they had gotten a scratch 
or um, you know, some kind of infection that they had not known how to care for themselves and as a result were having these catastrophic consequences. And so that led to a whole series of questions about literacy and the relationships between academic literacy and healthcare literacy and how uh, literacy might be improved in um, both our own community and the communities where she was working. And so she requested materials that they could use that were written in very simple Spanish that could be used to educate by volunteers to educate um, people about healthcare and some of the simple things that they needed to do to prevent diseases like malaria and to um, you know, manage issues like the ones that we talked about. So students put together a series of healthcare materials, which meant that they had to do some ongoing investigation about common healthcare issues in that area. They had to learn a lot about literacy in order to think about how they might generate materials that would support literacy development. Um, and then they produced the materials that were then sent with this doctor back to the communities to be used by volunteers. Um, and that project was so successful that it in, uh, engendered several repeat projects um, along similar lines. Uh, this one is a museum project where learners are given the opportunity to um, create activity brochures for use in a local art museum. And the audience are Spanish-speaking patrons of the museum. Another example of where you might get project ideas is from the learners themselves. So asking yourself, what do my students talk about? What do they think and worry about? And what do they care deeply about? And you can ask your students those questions. Uh, one thing that I think is difficult for us, um, especially if you've been teaching for a while, is to realize that many students are capable of doing amazing, life-changing things that really do impact the world, even at very, very young ages. Um, and I've given you a list of links to young people who are in the news for the kinds of projects that they have single-handedly um, initiated and then uh, conducted in conjunction with community partners. Um, this is an example of a project where students had been exploring um, Romeo and Juliet in other languages, and the students were excited about it and decided to create a parody of Rome Romeo and Juliet um, in the language and that resulted in a video. This one was a realization that a lot of memories from the Spanish speaking community that had contributed to the history of the community were being lost. And so this teacher partnered with a family research center and a local heritage museum to produce a magazine that contained a lot of stories from the local Spanish speaking community um, that was targeted at Spanish speaking patrons of the museum and high school Spanish learners. In other words, these are simple examples of different types of projects. Each one might require a variety of things that you, know, you might need to tweak, but essentially what we need to do is think about what kind of question could really drive where students end up going. Powerful driving questions, give direction to the project, evoke curiosity, help learners explore real world contexts, are open-ended. They're not things that we can just Google. They have multiple answers. They frame and bound the exploration. And they motivate sustained inquiry and sustained action. So we'll know that we have a good driving question if students bubble with questions about it, want to explore on their own, or rush to tell you things that they've learned or discovered. And of course, they foster interpersonal communication. They're going to focus on proficiency by really thinking about, am I giving students opportunities to ask questions or to describe or to narrate or to state and justify opinions? 
Um, and you'll choose communicative functions. This is just a partial list based on what's appropriate for your learner's proficiency level and scope of the project. And you want them to invite innovation. We're about out of time here, um, but hopefully what you have noticed from this is that you start with a textbook topic if you want, or with a real world topic, but you're going to find a conceptual anchor. Um, and then you're going to start thinking about how could I situate the topic in a global theme, a cultural context, a career pathway, and connect it to learners' lives. And so here are a couple of examples that show you how you might move from a textbook topic to a more conceptual global issue, to a cultural context, into or connected to a career pathway um, that gives students opportunities to negotiate cultural, intercultural um, communication and what that might look like as a driving question. For those concerned about beginning language learners, uh, Laura Sexton has been doing a lot of work with projects in level one classes. Although all of her projects may not necessarily be directly aligned with gold standard PBLL, it's a, her blog is a great resource for giving you ideas for projects that might work with learners and she's reflected on her projects as well. Um, so that's a resource for you. And in order to help you think about developing learning outcomes, this is a little menu that will help you to do that. Um, and a little formula that you can think about a little bit more when um, some of our colleagues talk to you about learning out outcomes in the future. To close, the reality of PBL can be very messy, but it's still very much worth the trip. And I recommend that instead of being overwhelmed by all of these ideas, that you ask yourself what the very next step you and your learners are going to take in planning your PBL journey. And that's probably looking for project ideas. And there are lots of resources on um, the in, within the modules that you can explore that will help you to do that um, more systematically if you need a little bit more step-by-step -step coaching. And with that, we will turn the time back over to Stephen. Thank you very much, Cherise. Uh, as you noted, we've come to the end of our allotted time. And so today we're going to wrap up our session without uh, extended question and answer.